I find it very ironic that this is the 10th movie I've seen released in 2016. Cloverfield Lane is about when Michelle gets in a car crash and wakes up in John Goodman's underground bomb bunker. And as anyone would be, she wakes up and she is immediately disoriented. However, Goodman explains to her that the air outside is not breathable. But is it that or is he just crazy? First things first, the marketing for this film was very well executed. To keep a movie under wraps up until two months of its release date, it just in general is insane to me. And it also didn't show too much, which was definitely in the film's favor. Depending on who you are, 10 Cloverfield Lane is either going to be very underwhelming or utterly fascinating, and luckily I landed on the latter half as I absolutely loved this film. Let me tell you guys, there wasn't even a moment where I thought about checking the time. I didn't want to check my phone or anything, I, my eyes were just attached on the screen the entire time. From beginning to end, 10 Cloverfield Lane is a riveting film perfectly blending together comedic and eerie tones. Primarily, the acting isn't bad here, like, at all. Mary Elizabeth Winstead does a fantastic job in this movie. Her character isn't just completely helpless throughout the film, she's actually an extremely intelligent and likable character that the audience could root for the entire time. I mean, she acts as if any of us would in this situation. There's also this character, Emmett, who's in the bunker with them as well, who provides for a ton of comedic relief that, at moments, had me absolutely laughing out loud in my theater. However, the standout here, which you've probably heard in all the other reviews, is John Goodman. The amount of presence this guy demands on screen in every single movie is absolutely mesmerizing, and he doesn't hold back in this one whatsoever. Right from the get-go, you can tell that his character is very off kilter and every time he's on screen your muscles tense up and it's just like oh my god it's so creepy whoa however his character will say things that seem very rational and believable which will keep you thinking is he crazy or what which had me extremely invested and the direction here is fantastic as well as this is the first full-length feature film for director Dan Trachtenberg, he knocks it out of the park. He perfectly encapsulates the sensation of dread and claustrophobia that's necessary for a film like this. And as I stated earlier, the writing here is great as well. There will be scenes that have you snickering just from the film's subtle tongue-in-cheek humor, but then the tone will shift into an extremely ultra-rich and creepy overall vibe that is just very unsettling and it seems like a very natural tone shift, which most movies nowadays can't really do properly. This movie managed to do that though. Now this won't be a spoiler whatsoever, but for people who saw the movie and weren't fans of the final 15 minutes, I 100% understand why you can find this to be extremely underwhelming, but personally for me it didn't decline from the viewing experience whatsoever, and I still loved the movie. Alright, so now that I said what I wanted to say about this film, I want to hear what you guys thought. Did you see the movie? If you have, comment below and tell me what you thought of it. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, let me know. If you haven't seen it, let me know if you will or will not, and for which reasons, and if you, if you would like to help me out, click the like, the share, and if you haven't already, the subscribe button. And as always, thank you all so much for watching, and until my next review, I'm Random Mr. 411, and I will see you all later.